The consequence of a riot is the dismantling of the illusion that prison is controlled by the guards. The consequence of putting down the riot is the dismantling of the leadership structure within the inmates. All that remains is chaos. Getting to jump back into Mike McCluskey's been great. So it's, it's a ton of work. It's complicated, and that kind of keeps me on, on my toes. I think there's just a rawness that season two just brings to life. I mean, we follow these characters down dark tunnels. It's just an honor to get to create and perform in the Sheridan universe. Last season had a lot of viscera, had a lot of like guts in it. And this season has a lot of guts, but it also has a real ton of heart. You can take it off now. There's actually even more to do to try to manifest any type of peace. But it's a wonderful journey. Very difficult this season. Bloods and Crips have been hammering at each other, but they've got no weapons now, so mm. just a bunch of schoolyard brawls. Oh. Raging out here pretty good, though, huh? It's like a luge out here. There's a psychological violence to this season that is, like, really exciting, with everybody dealing with the fallout of the prison riots and everything. Fans are going to see everybody become unhinged. You really delve deeper into people's backstories, and you start to see how the trauma of the prison riots affected some of the guards and the officers. I think that it's impossible to go through something like that and not be changed, not just the individuals, but the institutions and also the city itself. You know the deal. The outside run from the inside. And we can't get no messages in or out. We can't get the product in, can't get no money out. The status quo has been disrupted. And as a result of that, you now have people within the system and also outside of it who are trying to capitalize on the chaos. When there's no leaders inside, everyone tries to play leader, okay? So the stakes are much higher this season. And it's within all the inner circle, from the cops to the prisoners, the gang leaders, they're all on the chopping block here. And even myself. Make a mark. Charlie Mark. As with all Taylor Sheridan worlds, there are no black and white archetypal characters here. There's a storyline with, with Milo after him escaping prison and then discovering that he's not been found inside the prison. I might always believe that he's gotten out. Iris did something that means death in Milo's books. Really, she, she sold him out to the FBI. She knows that Milo is gonna come for her, and it's only a matter of time. The family unit stands to be such a place of strength that you see with so many characters. I think that you're finding bits and pieces of the importance of family all throughout the different storylines in the show. Kyle is running as fast as he can away from the pain and the shame of the prison riots. And no matter how fast he runs, he can't escape it. It's been very revealing, actually. And uh, we get to see a lot more of Bunny's world and I guess his history. I spent my whole life in this sorry ass. Every time, this somehow this bitch get worse. It's been really good working with D Smoke, a hero of mine, who is also my friend, so I want. <laughs> What's beautiful about the character of Raphael is that there's a certain level of mystery. There aren't any scenes where they're like, this is why I'm in jail. So that question is as much intriguing as what we do see from him. You don't know what's to come from him or where he comes from. I mean, this cast is incredible. And Renner is, you know, he's found this other gear. We just kind of focus on what we have in front of us and, and move forward and, and trust each other as a unit. How you feeling? I think it's the most grounded, volatile television on. Everything's exciting. Absolutely everything. It's incredible. I'm looking forward. Just watch the whole thing, all right? <laughs>